The Bible says, let us make man in our image. We're only men in relation to God. The concept of man in the world is not the same as the, as the concept that God has. But when we know who we are in him, you realize that you are a lot more stronger than you realize and a lot more powerful than you realize. Praise the name of the Lord. That's where God wants us to be. Colossians 4 and verse 6, let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. So God gives us an ideal in terms of how we deal with things in life. That's why it's better to go to him first. Praise the name of the Lord. And 1 Timothy 2 and verse 8 says, I desire therefore that in every place men should pray without anger or quarreling or resentment or doubt in their minds, lifting up holy hands. You see, it's good to pray. It's good to worship. It's good to honor God. It's good to weep before him sometimes. Tell him all about it. You know, tell him how you feel. Let him pour his presence into your life. That's where God wants us to be. I'm telling you guys, we are more powerful than we realize. And remember, we learned that how God is central to our existence, how his name alone, his name, the spelling of his name, is in the identity of who we are, Ish and Isha. It's there. God is central to our existence. Praise the name of the Lord. So when we look at Nehemiah, and I'm going to come down now, Nehemiah, Nehemiah was not the first of the exiles to return to Jerusalem, because it was some 90 years earlier, when we look at the book of Ezra, that Zerubbabel, he had led the first group back to rebuild the temple. So Zerubbabel, in the first instance, leads the people back to rebuild the temple, and then sometime later, Ezra followed with a second group in the book of Ezra, you'll find that, bringing spiritual revival. See, Ezra brought the law back to the land. Zerubbabel ensured that the temple was rebuilt, and Ezra came with the law. He brought the word back to its rightful place so they could declare the word of the Lord in that place. And now Nehemiah was ready to lead the third major return to Jerusalem. When he arrived after a three-month journey, he saw the completed temple, and he became acquainted with everything around that temple and around the, house, the homeland. He also found a very discouraged group of people when he got there. And obviously he also saw a defenseless city. So yes, they had the temple. And yes, Ezra had bought the law, but there was something missing. There was no defense around the city. So Nehemiah begins a basic program. Praise the Lord. He sets up a fair system of government. This is what Nehemiah does to help to care for the physical needs of the people and to rebuild Jerusalem's walls. He also cared for their spiritual needs by rebuilding broken lives. Nehemiah is a model of committed, God-honoring leadership and we can learn many skills from what he had done. That's what the scripture is teaching us. So using time wisely, Nehemiah prayed at numerous, numerous times throughout the book of Nehemiah. You see him praying. He prayed at any time, even while talking to others. He knew that God is always in charge, is always present. He knew that God hears and answers every prayer. He could confidently pray to God throughout the day because he had established an intimate relationship with him during times of extended prayer. This is what God wants us to do. We can learn much from Nehemiah. If we want to be confident about our prayers, whether brief or long, we need to take the time to cultivate a strong relationship with God through times of in-depth prayer. Remember that was one of our imperatives. What was the imperatives? Pray without ceasing. Pray regularly. Make prayer your life. Speak to God regularly. Ask God questions. Find out what he wants you to do. That's where God wants you and I to be as men. You see the picture? The more you do that, the more you grow in him and you grow up in him. No man can teach you what God can teach you. The word of God is powerful. Praise the name of the Lord. So Nehemiah prayed on many, many occasions. Okay, in, 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 uh, chap in chapter 2 and verse 4. Then the king said unto me, 
for what does thou request? This is where this is before just before Nehemiah was going to head to Jerusalem. The king asked him, "What do you request of me?" And at that moment, he said, "So I pray to the God of heaven." Before he even answered him, he prayed to the God of heaven. So his mindset was on, "Well, God, what do I ask?" Isn't that wonderful? See, that's an example, isn't it? So he prayed to the God of heaven. Then there was in Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. And Nehemiah prayed, Hear, O God, for we are despised. Turn their taunts upon their heads and give them for prey in the land of their captivity. Cover not their iniquity and let not their sin be blotted out before you. For they have vexed with alarm the builders and they have provoked you. And all Nehemiah was doing was that in everything he was just praying. He found himself praying for everything. Nehemiah 5.19 Think upon me, my God, for according to all that I have done for this people. You see what I'm saying? Everything that Nehemiah needed to do, he just prayed. Scripture teaches us that. Glory be to God. So, um, Nehemiah 6 and verse 14 My God, think thou upon Tobiah and Sambalat according to, to uh, these their works and on the prophetess Nodiah and the rest of the prophets that would have put me in fear. In essence, what they were trying to do was to undermine his confidence by trying to intimidate him. And that's what the devil is doing to every man in the nation today. He's, he's, he's trying to undermine our confidence by intimidation. And that's why you need to know who you are, because when you know who you are, yes. Nehemiah knew he went to God. Everything that he needed to do, he just went to God. He said, God, 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 everything. And each time he spoke, God would speak to him and God took him to a place where he needed to be. Glory be to God. That's the place where God wants us to be. So here you will find that Nehemiah has a number of enemies in, in, in chapter 6 because the walls are built now and he, he, you know these guys are now trying to draw him away. So I'm going to just uh, clarify some points here. In, uh, in the next few minutes, but this is important because I want you to get this into your spirit. Read the book of Nehemiah. You'll learn skills of leadership, of prayer, of how to deal with situations, of how to take action. You'll learn so much from him. Firstly, we learn that God is in the business of working through his people to accomplish what we may consider to be impossible tasks. But what we need to do is that we need to see as God sees. We've got to begin to see what God sees. Because if we have on the, our spiritual eyes, we will see what God sees, hallelujah. And everything that we do, we know that God is speaking to us because all we're seeing is what God is seeing. That's important. And that's how we grow. Secondly, Nehemiah was prepared and positioned by God to be used to accomplish what was considered to be an impossible task. But still, Nehemiah saw what God saw because he prayed to the God of heaven. So he wasn't afraid to step in line. And as Nehemiah talked with God, a plan began to develop in his mind about how the city walls were going to be built. And because he saw how God saw, he willingly left the security of his home, his job in Persia, to follow God on a seemingly impossible mission. We need to see God, see as God sees. Nehemiah was a cupbearer. Cupbearer was a very important job in those days. He, he was the one that drank the wine before the king drank it, so in case it was poisoned. But it, it was considered a very important job, and he, 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 he gained a lot of respect from the people in that land. And to get the favor of the king that he could go to Jerusalem, that's even more powerful. Glory to God. And because he saw what God saw, Nehemiah displayed what I would consider unusual leadership. Unusual leadership, glory to God. And we will be able to actually display unusual leadership when we see what God sees and we start operating his way. So there are two ways on becoming useful to God. One, by a person that talks to God. Be a person that welcomes God into your thoughts. Be a person that welcomes God into your concerns and feelings. Be a person that shares yourself with God. Okay? It's important. Don't, be, don't, don't, don't let anybody put you off from praying, from seeking God, from sharing with God, from sharing your concerns with him, your feelings. Give it to God. Because that's where Nehemiah um, was successful. He gave everything to God. 
I mean, imagine that you're talking to someone and then you're, in your mind you're saying, Lord, what do I say to this person? Come on. That's faith. He had faith and belief enough to know that God would respond so that when he opened up his mouth, he would say the right thing to the king. And the king showed him favor. Bless the name of the Lord. Secondly, we need to be a person who walks with God. Put what you learn from him into action. Nehemiah put what he learned from God into action. Yeah, God may have an impossible mission that he wants, to, wants you and I to do, but we put God first in everything. Whatever decisions we have to make. Nehemiah had some great strengths and accomplishments in his life. He was a man of character. He was a man of persistence. He was a man of prayer. And that's the kind of man that God loves. Let me tell you that now. He was also a great planner. He was a great organizer and definitely a great motivator. He would have had to have been a great motivator to motivate these guys to build this wall. Even though they were fearful for their lives, they built this wall. He would have had to have been a great motivator, wouldn't he? Come on. And he would have led by example. Yeah, so they were all up there with one weapon in one hand and building with the other hand. That's, that's uh, extraordinary. Extraordinary. Imagine motivating men to do that. And they've been fair of their lives. Under his leadership, the wall around Jerusalem was rebuilt in 52 days. And as a political leader, he led the nation to religious reform and spiritual awakening. These are all the things that he accomplished. He was calm under opposition and was capable of being bluntly honest with the people when they were sinning. He told them the truth, basically. You ought not to be doing this. He spoke the word. So what lessons for life can we learn from this? Well, one, the first step in any venture is to pray. That's something that we can learn from this, isn't it? The first venture in every man's life is to pray. Yeah? When you wake up in the morning, open up your mouth, give God all the glory and the praise and just begin to talk to him and magnify his name. Secondly, people under God's direction can accomplish impossible tasks. Remember that. We can't do it in the flesh. We have to do it in the spirit. We're dealing with spiritual wickedness in high places. We have to move in the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. That's where God wants us to be. Thirdly, there are two parts of real service to God. Talk with him and walk with him.